Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. They are ready to roll. Shipping is underway for Johnson & Johnson's single-dose vaccine after the final green light from the government was given over the weekend. And now three vaccines are available one year after the nation's first COVID-19 death. Plus, a Detroit firefighter, or a Detroit fire chief, rather, ends his shift in handcuffs. We'll tell you what we're learning about the arrest. But first, we're following two breaking stories here at noon. Fiat Chrysler Automobiles pleads guilty to charges arising from the UAW corruption probe. But first, a suspected killer shot by Detroit police. Those stories top our news at noon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Evrod Kasimi. This is video from the very active police scene. It's just outside of a motel on Detroit's east side. And we're told the man who police shot was suspected of killing multiple people. So let's get out to our Priya man. She joins us now. Uh, with more on this story, you've been there ever since news broke. What are you learning, Priya? Yeah, Chief Craig says this was a man from Ohio wanted for at least three murders and two attempted murders uh, in Ohio, made his way to Detroit, and that's where there was a violent shootout here in this parking lot uh, early today at the Rivertown Inn at Suites at Jefferson and Rivard. Here's what Chief Craig is telling us. They were informed last night that this man uh, wanted for three murders, two attempted murders in Ohio, had made his way to Detroit. Now, it was the quick thinking of the supervisor on duty last night to to not try and approach this man at the Rivertown Inn and Suites. They waited for him to leave. That's what he did this morning. When the man exited the hotel, he may have spotted either a marked or unmarked police officer, went to his vehicle and opened fire. Multiple police officers returned gunfire. Here's what Chief Craig had to say about this very violent takedown that happened earlier today. The message is simple. Uh, our, our police officers are relentless and tracking down violent suspects. You come to the city of Detroit, we'll find you. Uh, and this was a, a great example of great collaborative work between two different agencies. And Chief Craig says multiple handguns were found uh, from this man's vehicle, possibly inside his room. Thankfully, no police officers were injured in that shootout. This man, again, wanted for three murders and two attempted murders, is in critical condition. Chief Craig also says one of the victims in Ohio was his ex-wife, who he stabbed to death. Again, that man is now in critical condition. Police are investigating. But again, the quick thinking of police officers led to that shootout in the parking lot. But again, no guests at this hotel. No police officers were injured. We'll continue to follow this story. Reporting live today, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4 News Today. Thank you, Priya, keeping us updated there with the very latest. Also breaking at this hour, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, now part of Stellantis, has pleaded guilty in a long-running corruption probe. It was just not too long ago that they formally admitted to paying more than $3.5 million in personal expenses for senior UAW officials. Let's get out to our Rob Maloney. He joins us now live with these breaking developments. Rod, what are you learning? Well, uh, what we learned this morning in about an hour long court hearing is that uh, FCA, uh, part of Stellantis, has pleaded guilty. And essentially what is going on here is that Stellantis, with its new management, is sort of taking over and sort of cleaning up messes that were left from the previous administration. And uh, so let's take a look at precisely what it is that they pled guilty to today. And it's the long the long running story that we've been seeing and checking on for the last several years now, but it's all about the improper National Training Center funding that uh, FCA spent between 2009 and 2014, about three and a half million dollars that were given to UAW officials. Uh, General Holofield was uh, among them, uh, the late General Holofield. He was the UAW vice president at the time for, uh, for Chrysler. They had Norwood Jewel. He uh, went to prison. Uh, they had a big party for him, got a custom made shotgun and had a big party for him. Um, and that was sort of in the, in line with a lot of the differing things that were done that a lot of UAW officials and also Alphonse Iacobelli, the vice president uh, for, uh, for Chrysler at the time for a union uh, labor relations, having and buying things like expensive fans and Ferrari automobiles and having parties and golf and expensive food uh, given to the UAW officials. And that was all part of that three and a half million dollars that was uh, part of that 
And so what now uh, FCA agrees to is federal oversight for the next three years. There will be a federal monitor making sure that there are no uh, uh, payments to UAW in this fashion going forward and that uh, FCA is going to pay a $30 million fine as a result. And when asked, uh, one of the attorneys for uh, FCA said, you know, well, how do you plead? He says, guilty, Your Honor. And that's how this ended. So uh, in many ways, it looks they're looking to put an end to this chapter uh, in the FCA UAW history. Uh, and uh, Rory Gamble, the UAW head that we spoke with a couple of weeks ago, uh, said that the union is now looking to move forward, that it's a greatly changed union uh, since that time. And so uh, we'll be looking more into this and talking a little bit more about what it means. But it, uh, it does bring to a close a rather ugly chapter in the automotive industry. Reporting live from Auburn Hills, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Rod, thank you. In other news this afternoon, a Detroit fire chief ends his shift in handcuffs and sources are connecting his arrest to a crash that happened while he was allegedly under the influence of alcohol. This is a photo of the car hanging over the Lodge Freeway. Take a look at that. Local 4 Sean Lay joining us now live this afternoon with a look at what we're learning about this arrest, Sean. That photo we just saw at Rod's making its way through text messages all over Metro Detroit. Fire officials region wide are reacting with absolute shock that a fire chief would crash his car in that manner. Our cameras were there when Detroit police took that chief into custody. The local four defenders with this image of a Detroit fire chief's SUV dangling dangerously above the lodge right in Milwaukee and Baltimore early this morning. Sources tell us the driver of the SUV, the Detroit Fire Department's chief number five. Our cameras capturing Detroit police taking that chief into custody. Sources say for driving under the influence. This all unfolded before two this morning. A call for a fire on Detroit's west side at Majestic and Livernoy. Chief Five was supposed to be there. He would serve as the head coach of the firefighting operation, directing firefighters, keeping track of them, calling for EMS if needed. But repeated calls on the radio, Chief Five could not be reached. Eventually, he was found in the department SUV, dangling over the lodge, unable to get out of his own SUV. He told crews on the scene he was not hurt. This comes one week after a Detroit firefighter over on the east side, the department says, was driving a fire engine drunk, responding to a call and crashing into a car once he and his crew got to that call. So here we are again, exactly about one week and 12 hours later, another member of the Detroit Fire Department under investigation for uh, operating a vehicle, uh, responding to an emergency, uh, again, allegedly under the influence of something here. Sources say alcohol, perhaps maybe more, but an alcohol screen was given. That Chief 5 works out of a station house at 2nd and Burroughs in the Midtown section of, the, uh, of uh, Detroit. I am told everyone on duty at that time right after this crash uh, went through an alcohol screen. Four negative tests came back, Evrod, four tests pending further investigation, further analysis into those tests. We'll be speaking to the fire commissioner here in just a bit to get his thoughts on, again, uh, an issue here within the department. Back to you. Yeah, and Sean, we know you'll stay on top of it. Thank you for keeping us updated on this situation. An investigation is underway now after a Wayne County Sheriff's deputy is involved in a crash. Sky 4 was over the scene this morning, right in the area of Indiana and Schoolcraft. That's under towards west side. Investigators say the deputy was trying to avoid hitting another vehicle, uh, swerving, and one of the cars hit a fire hydrant. We're told that no one was hurt or arrested. Well, the U.S. now has a third coronavirus vaccine to help bring this pandemic to an end. On Saturday, the FDA granted emergency use authorization to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The first vials of the single dose shot are being shipped out. This is video of the rollout from the McKesson Distribution Center. It's over in Kentucky. The company CEO says that Americans should start getting the single dose shot within the next day or two. Here is Stephanie Gosk with more. With a third COVID vaccine now approved for emergency use, there is new hope that the effort to vaccinate America will speed up. Johnson & Johnson set to deliver 4 million doses of its vaccine this week. The FDA's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, or ACIP, recommending the vaccine for people 18 and older. Well, you now have three highly efficacious vaccines. If you go to a place and you have J&J &J and that's the one that's available now, 
I would take it. I personally would do the same thing. I think people need to get vaccinated as quickly and as expeditiously as possible. In clinical trials, J&J's vaccine demonstrated a 72% efficacy in the United States and was 100% effective at preventing COVID-related deaths. The vaccine can also be stored at regular refrigeration levels and requires just one dose. Johnson & Johnson is going to be a game changer. The fact that we can fully vaccinate everyone in just one shot, it's just going to get us to the finish line that much faster. Still, for now, getting shots into arms hasn't been a smooth process. In Washington, D.C., the mayor and health officials say technical issues with their vendor caused their site to crash as people tried to sign up for appointments. While California, which has faced delays and issues with distribution of its vaccines, is set to roll out a new statewide network today, run by Blue Shield. And as more states lift restrictions, health experts warn that even though daily cases and deaths are declining, they still remain too high. Now is not the time to relax restrictions. Johnson & Johnson says 4 million doses will be out by the end of this week, but officials caution that the supply of this single-dose vaccine could be spotty this month, even though the company says there'll be 20 million doses out the door by the end of March. Johnson & Johnson also says it will begin trials on children under the age of 18 and pregnant women. Stephanie Gosk, NBC News, New York. Thank you, Stephanie. Still to come, it's a big day for some hardworking teachers and educational staff here in Michigan. We're going to take you inside of a special vaccination event that was happening at Ford Field. But first, Brandon has your forecast for this first day of March. Wind is winning the weather forecast, at least for now, but we are tracking some flakes, more snow or sun as we head through the day. That and what's next. Local 4 News at noon, coming right back.